Good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my presentation about NR, NAD, and aging today. Next slide. By 2050, the world's population aged 60 or older is expected to total about 2 billion, up from about 900 million in 2015. The average life expectancy for Americans is approaching 80 years old. People today may be living longer, uh, however, they're not necessarily living healthier as they age. So let's start by taking a look at what the World Health Organization's definition of aging is. Um, at a biological level, aging results from the impact of the accumulation of a wide variety of molecular and cellular damage over time. What that really means is that cellular damage or dysfunction is aging or is the definition of aging. Next slide. If we really wanna start getting a grip on what aging is, we need to start by taking a look at the difference between what we'll call biological age versus chronological age which means we really need to look at the physiological markers or some form of physiological markers to assess age, not time itself. There was a great longitudinal study uh, update that was published in 2015. Um, the publication was the quantification of aging, biological aging in young adults by Belsky et al., which followed a thousand young adults from their birth in 1972-73 to the age of 38. Uh, if you ask me, that's some pretty patient researchers. Uh, it, there's actually a new uh, version of that uh, or an updated version of that published this year, but I'm referring back to, to the one from a few years ago. What the data showed is that most participants' biological age was close to their chronological age. However, uh, many of those looked older, many of them looked younger, at least biologically. Um, what I found even more interesting was that the signs of biological aging or where the things started to go wrong, according to their study, was in the mid to, mid to late 20s is when they started to see changes. Next slide. A landmark publication in 2013 called The Hallmarks of Aging, which is perhaps one of the most heavily cited publications in aging research today, established what's called the nine uh, main areas of cellular function that became that become dysregulated with age. These hallmarks are genomic instability, telomere attrition, epigenetic alterations, loss of proteostasis, deregulated nutrient sensing, mitochondrial dysfunction, cellular senescence, stem cell exhaustion, exhaustion and last but not least, altered intercellular communication. Next slide. Our main interest with NR has been mitochondrial dysfunction. Um, however, mounting evidence has linked compromised NAD status to all nine hallmarks of aging. A 2017 review showed that NAD plays a central role in all nine hallmarks. Next slide. I wanted to highlight a few examples of NR and NAD publications related to the nine hallmarks. The first one, of the is the most recent one actually is from Dr. Wilhelm Bohr's lab at NIA, which showed raising NAD with NR uh, was a significant had a significant impact on improving telomere dysfunction. The second study from Khan et al. demonstrated that NR had significant impact on treating mitochondrial myopathy, and the last publication on, on the slide is from Johan Awerks at EPFL in Switzerland that showed that an increasing NAD with NR improved stem cell function. Next slide. Nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD, is critical in cellular bioenergetics and, ad and adaptive stress responses. NAD has a has emerged as one of the most important mole molecules involved in these age-related pathways. NAD depletion is a fundamental feature of cellular dysfunction and decline, and NAD depletion occurs in various tissues during aging and strategies for boosting NAD have shown tremendous promise for repairing cellular function. Next slide. We lose up to 50% of our NAD levels between the ages of 40 and 50. or 40 and 60, actually. Um, as we age, NAD production is disrupted, and I'll talk a little bit more on that later. 
Also, as we age, NAD demand increases with increased cellular repair activity. Published research, research has now shown that all cellular repair mechanisms, such as sirtuins, PARP, and CD38, just to at least name a few, are all highly NAD dependent. A simple way of looking at this is sort of a basic, simple supply and demand curve. As NAD su uh, supply is decreased with age, the demand for NAD is increasing, largely from increased repair activity. Eventually, there will not be enough NAD to supply cellular energy metabolism and repair, and you get left with a, a deficiency. So what this means is that NAD deficiency is a nutrient deficiency of aging. Next slide. If we look at NAD beyond the cell and we look at NAD levels in diseases and conditions, we can see that NAD declines. There are now hundreds of peer reviewed published studies that show NAD levels are dysregulated in many diseases or conditions. If we look at NAD with aging, the upper left side of this slide, you can also see that when under stress, NAD declines in most tissues. However, most activities of, uh, in clinical research are focused on liver, kidney, heart, and the brain. Chromadex has developed an extensive internal, external collaboration research program, which we call SERP, to organize and sponsor this type of research. More on that in a few slides as well. Next slide. Before all the buzz started on NR, or nicotinamide riboside, the importance of NAD in healthy aging, uh, there, was three, there were three well-known pathways in the cell that utilized NAD, primarily, and that was primarily from dietary precursors. The de novo biosynthetic path, which utilizes the amino acid tryptophan, the Price-Handler pathway, which utilizes nicotinic acid or niacin, and the salvage pathway through NAMPT, which utilizes niacinamide. Next slide. So where does NR fit into the story and what sets NR apart from these other precursors? Until Dr. Charles Brenner, who was at Dartmouth at the time, identified a unique NRK, a unique pathway called NRK or nicotinamide riboside kinase for utilizing nicotinamide riboside which he identified in 2004, somewhere around 2004, there were three known pathways to synthesize NAD, which I spoke about on the last slide. All three of these pathways are knocked down with cellular stress, with age, or with diseases or conditions. And when those pathways get knocked down, it disrupts NAD production. What sets NR apart from these other NAD precursors is that while these other pathways are being knocked down with dysfunction and dysregulation, the NRK pathway is actually being upregulated. What this means is that cells, uh, dysfunctional cells are essentially seeking nicotinamide riboside to rescue or restore NAD production. Next slide. So what is nicotinamide riboside? Um, nicotinamide riboside is a ribose derivative of niacinamide, meaning there's a ribose attached to essentially a niacinamide molecule. NR is, NR is present in the food supply. It's a naturally occurring metabolite in milk. However, it's only found in trace amounts uh, in milk or other uh, foods for that matter. And diet alone will not provide you with enough nicotinamide riboside to provide any meaningful benefit or in any way that would be meaningful to restore disrupted NAD production. Through the NRK pathway discovered by Dr. Brenner, NR is converted to another precursor called nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN, which you also may be hearing about. I'll talk more about NMN at the end of the presentation. Next slide. Since Chromadex launched NR in 2013, we've seen a tremendous amount of interest in the research community on NR as an NED precursor. Since 2013, Chromadex has signed up over 200 collaborative preclinical or clinical research studies with prestigious universities pretty much all over the world. And that's all under what I referred to before as our SERP program. This research program has led to hundreds of peer-reviewed published studies or science on nicotinamide riboside 
as a highly effective NAD precursor. And as a result, there are now over 50 clinical trials completed and or ongoing, which are posted on clinicaltrials.gov. Next slide. Separate from the collaborative research uh, that we do under our CERT program, Chromadex has also made significant investments in clinical research on its own on nicotinamide riboside. The first large clinical trial we did with, was with a, a, a firm called KGK, which was published in Nature Scientific Reports, which was an eight-week randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, parallel arm trial of 140 healthy, overweight adults supplemented with three different daily doses of NR at the doses of 100 milligrams, 300 milligrams, and one gram, or 1,000 milligrams. Me and we measure both the kinetics and dose-dependent effects of chronic niagen supplementation. On average, study participants consuming 300 milligrams a day experienced a statistically significant 51% increase in whole blood NAD within two weeks. This increase was maintained throughout the remainder of the eight-week study. The 1,000 milligram per day dose led to 142% increase in NAD levels which were also sustained through the remainder of the study. The study also further validated the safety and efficacy when used consistently over time. The results of the study were directly support the NAD boosting efficacy of NR, which was the primary focus of, of this clinical study. Next slide. One of the earliest clinical studies done by Doug Seals and Chris Martins at the University of Colorado, which was published in 2018, uh, titled Nicotinamide Riboside Supplementation Reduces Aortic Stiffness and Blood Pressure in Middle-Aged and Older Adults. This study showed NR improved vascular stiffness and reduced systolic blood pressure. Chris Martins, who is now at the University of Delaware, is continuing clinical research on NR in a new clinical trial. Uh, NAD therapy for improving memory and brain blood flow in older adults with mild cognitive impairment. And in that study, he's basically looking at the connection between this vascular stiffness and reduction of blood pressure and the effects that it's, it, it could have on uh, neurodegenerative type disorders. Doug Seals is also continuing clinical work on NR in a larger clinical trial looking at vascular stiffness and blood pressure, sort of continuing the work that they had done in the first study. Next slide. Another important study published in 2018 by Dollar if et al., which was a randomized placebo-controlled trial of nicotinamide riboside in obese men, primarily was looking at safety, insulin sensitivity, and lipid mobilizing effects. The study showed that NR had an impact on hepatic lipids, which has broader implications for liver health in general. Next slide. As I mentioned before, you may be hearing about another NAD precursor called NMN. There's been a, high, a lot of highly misleading information going around about NMN. NMN is a phosphorylated metabolite of NR. Despite what you may be hearing, there is no known transporter for NMN. The only way NMN can enter the cell is by being converted to nicotinamide riboside by uh, an enzyme called CD73. And that's fairly well published at this point that it's converted by that mechanism. If you want to take NMN as a supplement, you need to take more than 600 milligrams of anywhere near equivalent to a 300 milligram dose of NR. And that's just sort of a rough guesstimate uh, based on the weight conversion plus the efficiency of conversion by CD73. Outside of that, there's very little published clinical research to date. Um, there was also a very recent published clinical study uh, trial, uh, clinical study on NMN. Some of you might be aware of that study. Um, there are significant flaws with this study, which are pretty obvious from the published data itself, which really calls into question the validity of the, st the study itself. And in some ways, it's, it's sort of hard to believe that it actually got, peer, got through peer review and got published. NR has been notified, NR has been notified to the FDA but for grass and for what's called the new dietary ingredient status as well. Uh, NMN has not. 
Uh, we've also had approval from other regulatory bodies around the world in Canada, in Australia, and also in uh, European, through the European Committee, through our EFSA submission there. Again, NMN does not have any of these um, approvals from a, from a regulatory status standpoint. As long as there is a cost-effective supply of NR, there's really no reason to take NMN. Next slide. In summary, the increasing aging population over the next 25 to 30 years presents a serious social and economic burden for families, societies, as well as the healthcare system worldwide. Lifestyle interventions such as healthy diet, fasting, and exercise are always good ways to improve health and quality of life. However, following these lifestyle interventions may be challenging for most and compliance would most certainly be an issue. There's already a significant growing body of scientific research supporting the use of NAD precursors such as nicotinamide riboside to improve cellular health and promote healthy aging. NR is and will be the most effective way to raise NAD. So with that, I'll stop the formal presentation and uh, if there are any questions, we can take it from there.